where PT asked, how about saving a whole scene for a game like Stardew Valley, where most of your progress is in the scene and not variables? To try and address this in a general way, I've made a project which saves multiple scenes to show how this could be done. As always, the source code is in the description below. Saving and loading will always vary depending on your project. So for today, we'll keep it general and just focus on keeping track of what the player may have done in a given scene. For example, I can click to destroy this NPC and move to another room. When I come back to this room, the NPC is still gone and their friends are in the same position we left them. Let's take a look at the structure of the project. The main scene has buttons which send signals to the root node. Going into the script, we first change rooms to A in the ready function. The change room function checks if there's a current room. If there is, we free it before making a new room instance and adding it to the scene tree as a child. Saving is done just before we change rooms, as you can see in the functions below. Let's take a look at the room scenes. Room A has simple NPCs which have a set speed and direction. Room B also has a similar setup. Both rooms inherit from a base room scene. In the room script, we load the room in the ready function. This function is always called when we add the scene as a child to the scene tree, like we did before. I've shamelessly copied much of the code from the excellent saving and loading tutorial in the docs. You can read through the comments, but basically, if there's not a save file, we skip loading. The room initially has all its nodes in their default place. This line frees any nodes in the persist group. We'll take a look at how to add nodes to the persist group in a minute. Moving on, we open the file, and while there's a line that contains node information, we load that node and set the saved variables. Note that these lines are for setting vector2 variables. This is the position and direction in our case. This is because JSON files don't support the vector data type, so each part of the vector has to be saved as a float instead. All other variables are set down here. But wait, Johnny Goss Dev, you might say. Before I subscribe, how do we save? And what do these files look like? Well, if you want to save a node, you need to put it in the persist group. You can add a node to the group by going over here in the editor to the right. I've gone along with the tutorial in the docs and added NPCs to the group persist. All nodes in the persist group also need a save function. Here we pack up all the variables we need to save and put them in a dictionary and return it. In this project, the save room function is in the room script. It grabs all of the nodes in the persist group, cycles through them and grabs their save dictionary. We then store this dictionary as a line in the save file. In the project user data folder, you can see that we've got two save JSON files that correspond to each of these two rooms. And this quick tip has gone on long enough. So thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Feel free to like or dislike the video. And if you have any other questions, please comment below. Cheers.